Hi, welcome to the service today. It's uh, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. for today is the Gospel from St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed against or among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, 
and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he will, live, he will also live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever eats on this or feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue in Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who would, did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we believe, have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This past Monday, a report was published by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that warned that the earth is warming faster than originally feared by scientists. It calls for strong, rapid, and sustained reductions in greenhouse gas emissions and reaching net zero carbon dioxide emissions. Our summer of extreme heat, wildfires, and floods certainly seems to give credibility to the report's findings. We can expect that there will be at least two kinds of responses to this report. Some will heed the warnings of the report and adopt whatever kinds of changes that they are able to do. Others will disbelieve the findings and reject its advice. Jesus encountered similar responses to his words and deeds. After feeding a crowd of 5,000 or more people with only five loaves and two fish, he returned to Capernaum with his disciples by boat. The feeding was a miracle, a clear sign that this man possessed divine power and attributes. But those who witnessed the miracle and his disciples, who also played a part in it, failed to discern the reality that was on display before their eyes. When Jesus told them what the miracle meant, what this feeding meant, that he was true God and true man come from heaven to earth to satisfy the universal human need deeper than daily hunger. Some believed him, but many did not, and they turned their backs on him. One of the differences between our present climate crisis and the predicament of the crowd that had followed Jesus and the disciples that day has to do with remedy. When Jesus tested his disciples, asking them what they would, where they would get bread to feed the crowd, his disciple named Philip saw nothing but an impossibility. It would take too much money, money that they did not have, to feed that hungry crowd. In the case of a climate, our climate crisis, scientists, though deeply alarmed by the magnitude of the danger that they foresee, still talk as if they believe that it's possible for humanity to do something to soften the coming blows. They do, however, admit that the odds do not look very good, given the diverse and conflicting interests of humanity as a whole. 
The first thing the disciples witnessed that day in the wilderness was that the impossible for them was possible for Jesus. He had made a mountainous meal from the few fish and loaves that they provided him. Who else but God could do such a thing? In the multiplied bread and fish, Jesus revealed himself as God and man come to help us. The same truth should guide you and me in our initial response to today's climate change problem. We may not be able to do all that is needed on earth to restabilize our climate, but we can call upon the same Lord who <clears throat> multiplied the food and walked on the Sea of Galilee and calmed its waves. For Jesus is not just a good teacher, nor a great prophet. Jesus is God in human flesh. Together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, Jesus rules over all of his creation, including our erratic climate. Jesus is our ever-present refuge and strength, so we need not fear, fear the future, hard though it may be. Th through these troubled times, we will call upon the Lord of Lords and King of Kings for the sake of our global neighbors and us, that he and his mercy will spare them and us. He has promised to hear us and to help us that we may glorify and praise him for his saving help. And we can also both individually and as nations make changes in our ways, our lifestyles to take better care for this creation which God has placed us in to live. Yet Jesus' concern for humanity runs deeper than the stability of the Earth's climate and the well-being of our earthly lives. When those who he fed in the wilderness tracked him down in Capernaum, Jesus promised them something more than the miracle meal he had fed them. He said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. These words urge you and me to see the need of humanity, that it is greater than any of us realize. When asked what is necessary for us to live in this world and to live fairly well, our thoughts immediately turn to things like food, water, clothing and shelter, family and friends and work, good government, a peaceful society, and a healthy environment, and rightly so. However, we fail to recognize that these earthly needs actually come to us as gifts from God our Creator. And <clears throat> instead, we imagine that these are all things that we must seek and secure for ourselves in life. We see them as ends in themselves, things we must have in order to live. And consequently, we worry about them, we struggle to get them, and we compete with each other to get and keep our share of them as, a, as if our lives depended on these things alone. But none of these things last, and so consequently we anxiously pursue them all of our lives until we die. This behavior betrays you and me as people who are ignorant of God and our true place in life before him. Jesus' words promise us that God knows our true need and that meeting that need was the very purpose of his coming. By calling himself the bread of life, Jesus declares that he is the true staple of human life. To meet our deepest need, God sent his Son from heaven to earth as one of us. God became flesh and blood, a human being named Jesus. And he lived as a man at true peace with God. He feared, loved, and trusted God the Father with all of his heart, mind, body, and soul. He loved his neighbor as himself. He taught people that this was also God's will for us, and that we should return to that kind of life like he, he lived, 
And he preached that he himself was the one who makes that possible for us. So Jesus called himself the living bread or the one who gives true life to us. And he promised that he would do that by giving his flesh for the life of the world. By his crucifixion, Jesus kept that promise. He offered up his holy, innocent, divine human life as a sacrifice that washes away all the guilt, shame, and evil of our sinful ignorance of God. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead to welcome the world into new eternal life with him. Through baptism, Christ welcomes us into his death that has destroyed sin's power to keep us ignorant of God and his mercy. He welcomes us to share also in his resurrection, to live now by faith in him instead of depending on any of the good gifts of creation, since they are temporary and can't sustain us. By faith, we count ourselves as God's forgiven and beloved children. At this altar, the Lord regularly provides us with a miracle meal, for he feeds us his own body and blood together with the bread and the wine to deepen our trust in him and to send us to our neighbors to serve them daily with the love revealed to us in God's commands. The love, <clears throat> that love, the love we hear described in the commands, looks like parents giving their children a home life not founded upon the purchase things of this, that this world considers essential for happiness, but on mutual love, faithful teaching, and family worship. It looks like the practice of friendship, hospitality, and generosity shared with family and friends, but especially with those in need. It looks like an attitude of vigilant awareness of the suffering of others that leads us to intercede for them and to help them bear their load in life, assisting them as we are able. But the words of our Lord today also remind us that his love takes the form of steadfast witness to the truth, that the troubles of this life reflect the reality that this creation is itself passing away. Jesus did not come to give us our best life here and now. He lived, died, and rose from the dead to give eternal life to his dying creatures. He gives his flesh for the life of the world that we, through repentance and faith, may feed on him and live forever. Jesus rules over his creation invisibly now, and in his time he will return in open glory to make an end of all that opposes him and to restore us to true life forever. This is his promise, so this we believe, and this we confess for the eternal good of our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We confess the faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Faith 
and truth and life bestowing open now the scriptures lord seed to life eternal sowing scattered on a wind abroad let not hearts your word receiving like a barren field fight be found choked with thorns and unbelieving shallow earth or stony ground may the spirit's power unceasing bring to life the hidden grain daily in our hearts increasing bearing fruit that shall remain so in scripture song and story savior may your voice be heard till our eyes behold your glory give us ears to hear your word Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you that you have sent the great Good Shepherd who has compassion on his flock. In Christ's name, we lift up our prayers for the family of God, for every nation in this world, tribe, people, and language, and for all those who hunger for the true bread of life. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Grant us, O God, to work for the food that endures to eternal life. Bless the ministry of this congregation in our community, that many may embrace Jesus as the Christ and believe that he is the true bread of God who has come from heaven. Grant that we would never hunger or thirst for anything but Christ and his righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant true unity in place of disunity, harmony in place of disharmony, and peace in place of violence, that the spread of your gospel throughout the world may continue unhindered and the spirit of love abound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your Holy Spirit, change our old nature into your new creation in Christ. Enable us to cling to your word and sacraments, that we may put aside the cravings of our sinful flesh and be clothed with your likeness in true righteousness and holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your people, O Lord, from the impurities of this world. Save us from the violence outside ourselves and from hardness of heart within. By your righteous governance, Preserve and guide the leaders of our nation as they execute justice in our land. By your Holy Spirit, change hardened hearts with the gospel, that true peace may be established. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In these days marred by extreme weather, wildfires, floods, pandemic, earthquake, and conflict, hear our prayers for peace and relief. We especially pray for the Holy Spirit's blessing upon the preaching of the gospel, that through these days many would be brought to believe that Jesus is the bread of life and be sustained by him for eternity through his saving gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bestow your power of healing upon the sick, that in accordance with your will they may give thanks to your name. Give your spirit of hope to the depressed, the lonely, and those who mourn the death of loved ones. Strengthen their faith and assure them of your presence in all circumstances. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You continually feed your people, Lord God, not with what we want, but with what we need. And so we give you thanks and praise for your many gifts to us and ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us uh, <clears throat> to be rightly grateful to you for those gifts and also to trust in you at all times to provide for your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Within the fold of your tender care, O Father, we entrust these prayers to you 
that you might hear us, teach us your word, and feed us with the bread of life, even Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today, and uh, may God watch over you this week. Uh, we have one more um, online service until we're going to be having two weeks uh, away for a little rest time. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.